was not reused that night online for neither, neither the state nor any of its agencies or instrumentalities including the Vermont State Archives and Records Administration shall, if acting in good faith, be subject to civil criminal liability, et cetera. Um, and then it, um, so there's a uh, piece of section lock that we went through yesterday on the Burlington College records. Um, so again, uh, those records will be transferred from the agency to the archives, and again, there's protection from liability. Again, the words of acting and good faith have been added there, too. And then there's this transition provision that says on line 15, on or before August 1, 19, the agency of education shall enter into a memorandum of understanding with the Vermont State Archives and Records Administration with respect to the use and maintenance of education records that complies with the FERPA and the rules of the Act. Yeah. Well, that should. based on, on the limit on our pad, <coughs> I believe this works, but I'm, 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 of course, we take that's much further. Yeah. I'm sure we will have some other opinions. Yeah. <laughs> provide an opportunity. Well, I would say currently, I believe, the archives have, have student records. So, either it's violating FERPA now, or maybe there's a implicit understanding already, but yeah. Questions? Are we comfortable with that language so far? Yes. Ted, did you want to speak for the agency? I don't. Um, I don't, and we, for the record, Ted Fisher, Vermont Agency of Education, um, we don't have much to add over what Jim said. Um, just to his to his last point about the presence of student records in the Visara archives, they are there are records there. They have agency records um, stored at the archives currently, um, and as. Um, as Jim made reference to um, FERPA, regardless of, of the situation, the way FERPA, um, the compliance procedures through FERPA run through the state education agency. So even if the records are in a third party's hands or in AOE's hands, it still comes through us. Um, so uh, ultimately, you are you're, you're the agency that's liable. I, I don't know if I would put it in those words, but, <laughs> but yes. Um, so we appreciate the committee's attention to the student privacy issues, um, and we just wanted to note that we would have used a memorandum of understanding in any case for arrangements of this kind, and we're happy for the clarity on the bill. Um, and then um, um, just to reiterate what uh, we mentioned yesterday, we're talking about a last resort option here for, you know, in, in an ideal world. Um, uh, if college were to sadly close, uh, they, they would have made other arrangements, um, and we're talking about a way to um, to provide the best the best entity that can um, either hold the records physically um, and reproduce them, or or find a third party contractor to do so. And, and the agency is not well suited to do that currently. So we um, we would be happy to enter into an MOU with with the entity you designate with the uh, Secretary of State's office through the State Archives and Records. So the agency supports this bill as drafted? As drafted, we support the bill. Questions for the agency? Secretary of State. Good morning. For the record, Chris Winters, Deputy Secretary of State. I guess I'll say it one more time. We don't think we are the right place for this. I'm kind of trying to understand this would mean AOE would delegate to the Secretary of State who would delegate to Parchment. I'm not sure why we don't just cut out the middleman in all of this, because we're not going to be able to actively manage these records. We're not a registrar's office. We don't know FERPA. We don't know diplomas. We don't know student financial aid, all of those things. We think um, we should not 
have to pick up the pieces for AOE's bad decision when they took the Burlington College records in the first place and don't appreciate them dumping them into the state archives. Um, I know it's people who are not um, in charge now who make those decisions, but it was um, we advised against it at the time, and this is one of the reasons why. So um, we do think it would be a mistake to put them in the state archives. And we would just simply contract with a third party, I believe. I'm um, not sure where that funding would come from or uh, our resources in order to handle those records and sort those records and get it ready for a third party contract. Um, we don't have that either. We're a, a 35, I'm sorry, a 20 person shop the state archives, which includes a couple of archivists, a lot of records managers, um, three or four or four um, that are dedicated to a whole lot of other things. Um, so uh, we do not support this bill. If you could get an idea about what the appropriation would be, um, and, and can get back to that, um, it's possible that the money could be found. It's possible this bill could change. Okay. <coughs> that happens with our sister body. Questions? Are we just talking about a one time? We've cleaned this up so this won't happen again. Is that right? We have not we prevented have. colleges. We've required colleges if they're going to close to flag, um, not just financially, but so that hopefully would, in that time, someone would start looking at and talking to them and le putting liens on their property to pay for the storage of records. Is that kind of a, a, a train of thought of assumption in terms of once they're flagged, that that process would begin in terms of looking at the cost of the closing, whatever it was? Well, there's already a statute for being in the process for enforcement of the statute. I guess what this addresses, it's not just broken records, it's any college that it goes down and you can just keep that up from a place where it's Right. This would apply and the case right. up here. So this is a one time. This, this yes, is, is a one time transfer of Burlington College records. Right. And it's a, a, it's a fail safe um, that right. we hope. So even if we do everything, we get everything organized, there's still a Burlington College yep. too. Yeah. We have a plan. Right, and we prevented this from happening again because we, we don't have that power. We don't have the power no. to prevent oh. these things, <laughs> but we have a pro we, we have the ability to find a way to prepare for if it if it could happen, like which is what we're trying to do. Okay, we don't have that kind of control over the independent colleges, whereas we do with the state colleges. Yes. And I'll just note that the uh, state archivist testified to this that um, she has some really good ideas for how we kind of beef up that enforcement based on what some other states have done to address closing colleges. Um, there's a, look, a couple of really good recent examples that were highlighted in her testimony yesterday. But you know, again, with respect to the Burlington College records, we think we, this is kind of throwing good money after bad, that bad decision was made. We advised against it. Uh, we understand AOE's in a bad position. We, we wish they would have come to talk to us before recommending us in this bill, um, but that didn't happen either. We don't like being thrown under the bus. We understand. <coughs> Question. Is that Just to clarify, would an appropriation make you feel any differently? Mm -hmm. It would absolutely need to have an appropriation, but we still think um, you know, whoever gets the records has to have an appropriation. I think that appropriately deal with these very active records for all the students who are going to come after uh, looking for those records. But we still think it's very much the wrong decision to put it into the SARA. It doesn't make it any better in our shop than it does in Italy. Thank you. So we have um, spoken with the um, state colleges, and they have indicated some pretty good reasons why they're also not, not we're not finding anybody that wants these records except for independent vendors that will be paid. I think it, it, what I view is that somehow between the two of you, you need to figure out how to how to negotiate with a with a private vendor, figure out how much it would cost, and then come back and tell us what it is, and we find money for it. But I, I can't get anybody to 
Okay. We want to do that. We, we would be more than willing to consult with AOE on how to connect with a third party vendor on this, but to, to delegate to delegate and transfer to transfer again doesn't make a lot of sense to us. How long would it take you to negotiate that with AOE and are we just going to come back to the same place where neither of you are going to do anything about it? I'm not sure. Yeah. I don't want to promise anything. Because that was one of the things that we considered was to send the two of you off figure out how you're going to handle it and come back with us and we got what would happen is this so I don't know what that time is going to do right but if you you know I'd love to give it a try <laughs> Yeah. James. I, I have a question um, in terms of trying to find a compromise because I, I feel so uncomfortable voting for a bill that just says sorry you lose um, is there any progress to be found in the option we talked about yesterday of um, notify and destroy? Does that make it any easier for either one of you guys if the solution, we, we talked yesterday, Jim, about um, whether in the case of a, in the worst case scenario of an independent college, which is really in some ways you could argue not the state's responsibility saying, sorry, here's a box of records, whether the solution couldn't be to notify all the students that the records are available for a set amount of time and then they will be destroyed and not maintaining those records in perpetuity as a responsibility of the state. And I don't know whether that path appeals to anybody on the committee or whether it makes a compromise easier. I don't know enough about student records to know if you, know, you can't just give them to the students if they need them to verify their transcripts or diplomas or financial aid. They need an independent registrar function to do that. So I'm not sure that that would work, but I don't know enough about student records to really. I, I do know that that's a possible hurdle, but they're, they're, I can't believe there's not an answer. There, there, there can't be, it's not, <laughs> what am I trying to say? It boggles the imagination to me that there are multiple circumstances in students' lives where, for some reason or the other, they cannot get that original transcript. I, I just don't know what the responsibility of the state of Vermont is to look out for that possibility in perpetuity for an independent college that is closed. I know you're up against a hard deadline. The Senate is I, I, also looking at this issue. Yeah. If, if we could have I tell you what, I don't have to, we don't have to vote on it now. If you can work with the AOE, and I'd say you have until about 2 o'clock <coughs> to come up with something that you can, you can agree upon to, uh, to address this, I think that, that you have that time. And I would encourage the AOE to try to find a way as well. I don't think any of us think that just dumping it on you is a great idea. But we're kind of stuck with, right now, they're sitting in some boxes. They're not protected. You have protected. Nobody wants to be a registrar. So it's not like we've got between this great choice and this great choice. We have between two bad choices at the moment before us. So if you guys can come up with something else so that someone can figure out how we can get this to a private vendor and can figure that out by 2 o'clock, that would be great, unless you have some I, 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 don't, I, I, I agree with everything you say, and I would also just like to point out that we are months away from, from literally moving those records, and that would be an opportune time to move them out of the state, period. And it would be great if the records experts and the student experts could get together and say, we've got a plan that when the AOE moves, we're going to ship these babies down to a third party vendor, and, and the legislature's going to pay for it. And why I have actually asked you folks to find out what it would cost to do the Burlington records. And I've given you the name of a place to call and get that information, and then I can look at finding an appropriation. But with everybody doing this, I'm left with, you know, just going like this. Understood. <laughs> so I would say between now and 2 o'clock, if you guys can figure out a way, and we will find an appropriation for it to figure out how we're going to get those the records are going to physically move regardless of where they end up going. Those records are moving. Someone is moving those records because they're moving out of their building. 
What a great time to only move them once. It's the practical side of this job. Because <clears throat> we're, we're voting this out today. It's our last, our last day. Can you work in good faith? I want to see the good faith smile. <laughs> this is a bureaucracy of conference. <laughs> in the, just in the interest of time, we'll do our best. But that's what you like to hear. I like my job. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay, now back to our other easy The smile dogs. is the best part. From the wave, right? Yes. Just this minute? Walk this way. Okay. Lead is in my head. Okay, um, David Englander. You were going to speak to us, that's correct. I wasn't here this morning. David and Graham as well. Um, I did so. Do you want anything? Okay. He's going to drop. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, David. Again. We'll begin with the names. <laughs> uh, I'm, it's great to see you again. Second time today. My name is still David Englander. I'm the senior policy and legal advisor with Commissioner of Health. Um, and I, I think I'm again, I don't have a, a presentation of testimony so much as I, I come to answer your engaging questions and I'll try and keep my answers brief yes. as I can. I, I sent some questions to you. I think that you can send them to the committee. So. Um, yes, so if you, you could shoot, it'd be great. So I'm sorry, you said you sent questions to me? I did send questions. Let's see, what did I send? What was the means of transmission? How many interests? I forwarded something to you at ten oh six. And my the questions Thank were it was, it's a scatter shot to, to the to the folks. One is how many districts can we expect or people on staff are qualified to address plumbing? You don't have that one. Um, oh, what is the margin of error, probably for you, what is the margin of error in testing, given tester reliability, when we're just sending folks out to gather water? What's the margin of error? I actually think that would be, that would be a better question directed to Brian Redman than okay. PC. Um, I, I just, I, I still don't have the, the, the questions. I did, I, um, Madam Chair, you, when we spoke briefly, you asked about the failure rates on the pilot of yes. 1, 3, 5, yes. 15, and I've sent those to Shannon. And I, and I just, so I we, have we, we do have all these data. Okay. Give us one that you want shared on screen. Um, yes, please do. Okay. Dylan, uh, can you pull it up one minute? I can. Uh, you know what? It's here. We have uh, Dylan? Yes. We have no way to show Excel sheets that work online, so I can simple up an email here. Oh, okay. Whatever works for Which they would just so you know that when I do post it, it's it has to become a PDF. Okay. So there's like not a great way for that to get captured. I understand, so right, so it can't be it can't be sorted. Yeah, it just yeah, okay. if you have another version that you eventually want to send, but just so you know that. Okay. Um, or if we can plug into your computer. Yeah, let's just yeah. plug into, into I have it on Excel here. I'm saying for later when it is posted, there's oh, no okay. way that I, I can't post an Excel. Or if you send it to your Yeah. yeah. If we can look at an Excel. Uh, do you have an apple? 
I really hope my testimony is worth it because this is a lot of food. Wow. This is gas. Bill it is. So we can we can talk about the data. Yeah. And I, and I think and and, yeah. and Shannon can put it up. Shannon, you can put it up as a as a could you put it up as a PDF? No, yeah, no, okay. If you want that. Shall I talk about something in the meantime? <laughs> Topic of, Does that not fit your computer? I'm sorry, it doesn't. Do any of these? Oh, you need the USB C one. So the, the problem is the problem is Here, this. Here, I'll do it. Oh no, no, no. we we can patch this. Yeah. Right. This one works. Yeah. It depends on what. what oh yeah. Yeah. This one okay, works. Okay. The problem is the problem is. These are all the time. Time. Oh, oh, I see. I see. Sorry, that wasn't fair. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only vaguely when you're going to do all that. Ah, okay, look at that. Look at that. That's amazing. I don't even know what that stuff is. My understanding is it works on fine. Not with my gray hair. That's right, yeah. I need my gray hair. I'm noticing, just just a reminder, when it says 0 0.001 MGL, that's the same as 1 PPV. Oh, okay, maybe I'm looking at it. So let me, I'm sorry, so let me look up. Yeah. I'm delivering. Oh. Yeah, these are all the ones I say are now. I know. Oh, ten. Okay, so this is looking at this is those locations. That's the total number of samples. The first draw. What is the? So the so first draw the flush. Okay, so so we've got it at greater than one, greater than three, greater than five, greater than fifteen. So if we back up at the 15, <coughs> if it's just at 15, uh, Barry City and Richford show up, and St. John, uh, St. Albans show up is, is over 15 on first draw, right? And on flush, we have Barry City and Richford that are are highly problematic in terms of degree of over the limit. And if we look at over five, we pick up more. Yeah, I was hoping to sort of just get it as so so the greater than <laughs> I'm not quite sure what you're, uh, what what you're getting, but what, I, what, yeah. what I will say from my own observation yeah. is uh, that we clearly don't have a public health crisis at a level of five on the, after a tap has run, well, um, except in a couple of schools. Uh, David, in this pilot, uh, do you know if schools did all taps or was it left up to their discretion as to which taps to do? Right. So it was left up to their discretion. So okay. to be clear, the pilot, I, the, one, one quick point. This morning, people were referring to it as a pilot study. I want to clear, this wasn't, it wasn't a study. The Department of Health wouldn't consider it a study, we consider it a pilot. But that's an excellent question, which is that we, we left it up to schools to test to test the, the, the tap that they thought would reasonably be used for either drinking or food preparation. Okay, so you actually don't know if some tested all of them or some just did really follow that right. guidance. And then the Department of Health did not, it would not go into schools and identify faucets or taps and say, did you test that? That is really left to the discretion of the school and school system. So if we set our level at five, 
we set our level at five, we would, would have picked up, at, at 15, we picked up two or three areas, right? If we set the level at five, we pick up, what do we add? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, so six, eight, nine, five. ten. Ten on first draw. <laughs> Ten on first draw. Two. And two on flush. On flush. Two on the flush. If we set it at three, which is what the Senate wants to do, we pick up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Almost two all. <laughs> Almost all. Of course, the number of taps is the big number there. <laughs> and, and as a practical, I'm going to look to, to Brian. As a practical matter, I'm here. Um, as, a, as a practical matter, if an attack was replaced, whether it, whether it was whether it was above 15 or above five, the retests were showing that those numbers were, were below three, if not available for below three, sometimes below one. Is that after there? remediation? After remediation. After remediation, everybody was able to get, or just about everybody was able to get below one. I, I, yes, Brian, I, I don't think I, don't, I think the majority was actually below one, but everybody was below, but everybody was below three, um, except for I think one. For the record, uh, Brian Redman from Department of Environmental Conservation. I, I don't have the retesting data right in front of me, but generally speaking, remediation at the tap proved to be effective in the pilot. Um, we did have the experience where there was a sort of a, an uh, acclimation period following um, the TAP installation where our, actually our first retest samples came back high uh, and the TAPs needed to get to see routine usage before we actually went back and resampled and we had, we had clearance at low levels. I can't really tell you right now. We have retesting data. We put that together for the Senate, uh, but I don't have it with the okay. We can get those data. Questions? <clears throat> okay. So we would pick up, <clears throat> the Senate picked up two more, is that what it did? The Senate's bill, the <clears throat> bill would pick up, we figured on the first draw would pick up one, two, three, that was the, we were picking up ten, right? Yeah. If we set it at five, we pick up 10. If we set it at three, we pick up 12. Meanwhile, the ones that are below, and the ones that are below three, below five, how many of this total of 18? Right, but we're picking up, that's picking up schools, I suppose. Schools is above the tax, yeah. Which in some ways is Okay. Thank you. Uh, Dylan, did you? No, no. Dylan. I just want to let you know the screen. The screen is blank. Yeah. In front of a blue screen. And that would be put anything behind. You're like a meteorologist. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Let's see this. It's supposed to be green. Yes. Did they give us the recommendation? Did you give us the recommendation from the Department of Health? So, so the the administration so the administration so in consultation with DEC and AOE. Um, the, the, the department um, supports a level of five. Understand that that takes into account a whole panoply of, of, of issues, and not, not it's not it's not merely health considerations, but it's also practicality, um, as well as you know, working with you know a whole host of. Can you support a level of five? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, for the record, Brian Redmond. I'm the director for the Drinking Water and Groundwater Protection Division within the Department of Environmental Conservation. Uh, similar to uh, David Englander, I haven't prepared um, pre-written comments, but happy to answer questions. Um, based on the previous line of uh, questioning, Madam Chair, I, I was privy to the questions that you had sent earlier and had offered responses on questions three and four. Okay. And I'm happy to cover those if you'd like yes, me to. Yes, that would be great. Okay, so the, the first question that um, I was able to offer comment is what would happen if we soften language to target remediation only at the fixtures that can be reasonably expected to drink from or are used for cooking? 
uh, and the way that we responded to this um, question was that this gets into the, uh, the placarding question that was discussed in previous testimony earlier in the week. Um, they're, they're, the children might be drinking from and reading, um, compre uh, reading comprehension issues uh, adhering to do not drink the water signs. Uh, so this is not a policy in the terms of public water supplies that we have adhered to. And just to remind the committee of the schools in question, 150 of these are regulated as public water supplies. Um, so that's, that's, not, um, that, that, that's a little bit of concern for us. Uh, there's also issues uh, with the uses in the schools, change, uh, the uses of the specific taps uh, changing from year to year. So one fixture um, not normally in use that becomes a pre-K room, for example. Um, so that that's, that's also a consideration. So I think our, our recommendation for sampling uh, would be at locations that are expected to serve water for drinking and cooking. So expected to serve. Okay. Reasonably expected to serve. So we had a question uh, yesterday from an independent college uh, that works with primarily students that have been identified as special needs of some sort. They, they identified um, a part of the building that was the former, a former convent mm -hmm. and had bedrooms in a different wing, mm -hmm. which would um, make it a challenge for them to address all these little rooms. Mm -hmm. Would that, that language that you just gave us, would that, would that help so that they did not necessarily have to draw those taps into, into consideration? These are bathroom faucets or drinking water I'm going to quickly turn to the person. Yes, they're who, shaking her head over there. Bathroom faucets. And it's a wing. For the record. It's for the Elizabeth Novotny for the Mosaic Learning Center. They're bathroom faucets. And it's a wing that is not accessible, actually, to the students at all. These students all have one-on-one -on -one supervision. They can't go anywhere without an instructor physically present with them. So they're not roaming a building at all anyway. Mm -hmm. And the wing is only used for storage. Nobody uses that wing. So, but each room does have an in-suite uh, bathroom faucet. And one of them is divided as, I think, both a bathroom and a little uh, it, in the renovations that occurred over the years, and we put a little sink. I, I personally read the uh, language currently in S40 to be inclusive of, of bathroom faucets. I can say during our, our pilot project, um, that was that was somewhat discretionary. Um, we relied on school officials to tell us if um, uh, it was a, an area where children uh, were consuming water for drinking, uh, and. I, I believe the intent on S40 would be to be inclusive of sampling those those fixtures. The language that would work is uh, to be reasonably expected to be used for drinking and preparing food, or take out the word reasonably. We could we could David and I could follow up with the yes. committee. Uh, we had prepared language that um, we thought um, worked um, heading into the legislative session. We could certainly provide that to the committee. Okay, and that's something that you actually. Vetted in the Senate and uh, Specifically, no. No. Okay. So you could come up with language that would direct us to stay out of the janitor's closet, for example? Yes. The mop room? Yeah. yeah. Shower heads, things like that. Yeah, shower heads. Other questions? Oh, and then the second question. So the second question, uh, what is the margin of error on testing given question, uh, questionable tester reliability? Uh, the answer that we provided uh, to this question was the likelihood of a sampler introducing lead or failing to adequately capture the very first drop of water from the stagnation sample is very low, assuming, and this is the key, that they follow the necessary sampling procedures and label the sample containers correctly. Um, the same would, would, would be true as, uh, as well for lab reliability. Uh, it's, 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 uh, that, that's not the issue. Um, reliability and uniform, uh, uniformity across the samples uh, would really come down to the use of the tap between samples, how long the water sits prior to sampling, uh, and if there are issues with particulate lead uh, sloughing off from like a water camera situation. Uh, that's really that day-to-day -day variability is really going to be the, the most variable um, component of the sampling. Kayla, I'm going to give you an opportunity as well if you wanted to, to ask about some of the things that you were wondering about in terms of new technologies. 
Right. Well, just to clarify your last um, answer and question, I, I even if the methodology is good, because I agree, it seems like I've been reading through the three T's. It does sound a little hard. You're not supposed to spill any, and you're trying to get these fairly distinct amounts without any. So I'm just imagining someone there with three containers, kind of being very ready to, and, and should be able to do that. So. Um, but also reading that you could do everything correctly and get a false negative. And so the retesting, kind of the annual testing, we've just heard some testimony and also have been provided some reading materials that seem to emphasize that, that even though you might get a low reading one year, that's really not any kind of um, confirmation you're not going to get a high reading the next year. Methodology or not, you know, correct methodology or not, is that right? I would generally agree with that statement. Similar to what I just said, there are a lot of variables um, in the sampling. Um, you know, for example, you may replace a fixture and get a low reading, and then you come back and retest that same fixture a year or two later. Um, water temperature and stagnation time are big factors in the reading that you're going to get. I think it would be a false sense if we if we said that um, we could we could rest assuredly over time that fixture replacement that will take care of all the issues um, when we know there are other lead containing components uh, in the delivery system uh, to, to the drinking fountain or the faucet, uh, the solder, the pipes, the fittings, the valves, all the plumbing components um, that are old and have some amount of allowable lead, or lead content in them. And that amount has been greatly reduced um, in Vermont since 2010 at the federal level, 1986, and Vermont further reduced it in 2010. But as we all know, we have a lot of old buildings in this state. I got a couple more questions. Um, do we have? Do we think we have any lead service lines going to these schools? To the schools, um, not that we are aware of. I would say uh, there there is the possibility that there may be lead goosenecks in some, but we don't have a comprehensive assessment of lead service lines um, in the state. We have been rolling out. Um, two funding opportunities through our revolving loan funds to get a better handle on lead service line inventory. The two communities that took advantage of that were Springfield and Bennington. Okay. Uh, but that's also in the municipal um, water supply context, not necessarily in the school context. What they find? Uh, Bennington has lead service lines. Um, so they have those all mapped and publicly available now. Um, it's a really, we're a very exciting, uh, exciting project of what was produced out of that project and we're hoping, we've been um, touring it around the region actually, and uh, we're hoping that that can serve as the model for other communities. Uh, we do know EPA is taking a hard look at the lead and copper rule. We haven't seen action on it. We've been promised action, um, but we haven't seen anything yet. But uh, if what we're um, hearing is that there's going to be a greater emphasis on understanding and inventorying lead in the future rule. It is EPA. One more, Madam Chair. So I'm um, curious, uh, is it reasonable that we could, in addition to, to water testing, uh, that we could, your department, some department, could undertake an inventory of the actual lead, uh, the metal, the element lead, that exists in the infrastructure of water delivery systems and schools? And uh, I have I just been poking into this on how one might do that. It seems to me that X-ray fluorescence, this is XRF technology, seems to be fairly sophisticated. Um, hearing that some of this uh, SDD technology, new, kind of a newer handheld, can really, you could essentially go and point it at a faucet and say, is this 8% brass or fiber, excuse me, lead, or is this below the 0.25%? Does something like that make sense to kind of do in tandem um, to really just say, look, look we want to get the lead out. And the way we're going to do that is to remove the element lead from our school drinking water supply, kind of regardless of whether we get a low reading in one year on what we know is a lead-containing fixture. Um, 
that would be uh, cutting edge for us. Uh, there's nothing in place uh, in that regard now. Um, I will say one of the issues from where I sit within, within the agency, we regulate the public water systems. Uh, the actual plumbing and infrastructure in the interior of the building is under the state plumbing code, so it's not really jurisdictional for us. Um, so that could be a question for the state uh, uh, plumbing inspectors. Um, it's not an area that we currently have jurisdiction over. But your jurisdiction would compel someone to change that infrastructure. So you kind of have jurisdiction by proxy. I mean, if you have jurisdiction over the water and the water level is coming up because of the infrastructure and we say you have to remove the infrastructure based on an action level, then you essentially do have jurisdiction over those parts. Under the lead and copper rule, it prescribes a whole host of different notifications that must occur, treatment system evaluations. Um, the per tap replacement isn't necessarily a direction that um, we, have, we have been involved with, with. This is a new direction for us. Um, under the federal lead and copper rule, you're really looking at treating the water for its overall corrosivity um, and potentially adding corrosion control treatment to coat the inside of the piping materials. Um, so that isn't available um, to leach into the drinking water. So it's, it would be a, a, a different approach um, than we currently utilize with the 150 schools that we do regulate. Thank you. Thank you. I just, wanted, I just wanted to check one thing. We have a gentleman here who's a water, you're a water? Water system operator. For, okay, so I want to make sure that we have time for him so we can end, to end at noon because I know other people have obligations. I got this get two words to respond. Okay. Uh, great question. Uh, did the pilot show <clears throat> evidence that we have issues with distillate systems or mainline systems? Or did it really point strictly to fixtures as the culprit? In the pilot, it was um, the fixtures as the culprit. Again, we should take another look at the retesting data. We are operating off a higher standard. Um, you know, there are, are samples that uh, where the fixtures, like for example, Barry City has some, depending on the uh, standard, they had some samples that were, you know, in the two or three to four range, in the, even in the flush samples. Um, the, by and large, the sampling in Barry City looked very good, but there are some levels that if you're driving the standard down, we would still be actively working with them in remediation, where in the pilot we, we weren't. Yeah. We're talking about this later today more, right? We, we have our, our attorneys coming in okay. later today, and we're going to be looking at a backup on the bill. Um, we, we are, yes, uh, David, uh, uh, Michael Grady is going to come in, our attorney, and go over where we are with bills. It's going to be markup time. Okay. I have yeah. a thought, but it's not a question. Okay. I would like people to also feel free, if you could hang, hang around, and people can talk outside of the room. With, with other questions, our committee, we tend to get really deep into detail, and we, at some point, have to back out and make a broader decision. So I, I want to make sure that people are comfortable so that we can make the, the, the higher level decision about this and identifying what you just needs to go into rule that we stop micromanaging you. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, this okay. is not necessary. This is not necessary. Okay. Yeah. We, we, we have something at one related to something that's not. not we don't even work on we, we, We're going to cancel that, but we'll definitely have you come back at one, and we're going to, we, we still have, we're hoping, um, we have, we have, um, Representative Cooper seeing if he can work out something between the AOE and um, the. Secretary of State, <laughs> son of a former Secretary of State, is working with them right now. So, uh, <laughs> so <coughs> yes, if you could hang, hang around, and I would love to get a gentleman here who's actually a water operator um, to talk with us. Thank you very much for uh, giving me the time on dinner on such short notice on thing. My name is Richard Kenny, Chief Water System Operator for the Town of Hartford. I've been doing that for 31 years. Uh, I take care of the two, two water systems there. 
I'm also a contract operator for the Child Care Center in Norwich. I've been doing that for 21, better than 20 years anyway. Uh, prior to my moving up here to Vermont, uh, I worked in the Illinois water, municipal water system on Long Island and studying this business in 1973. So virtually I have 46 years and counting in the municipal water systems. One thing. I'm also past president of the Green Mountain Water Environment Association. I'm still on board of directors with them. Uh, that's an association, the state association that, that deals with uh, our membership is the water, wastewater, stormwater professionals the, uh, who basically design, maintain, repair the, 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 the water systems and wastewater systems in the market. And so uh, and I'm on a host of different committees with the state and such. I know Brian for many, many years and such. I'm thankful. So, so uh, coming from, and I'm also a taxpayer, so thanks mm -hmm. another, uh, another hat. I'm going to use this because of this thing, because I'm, uh, I've been struggling like crazy with, 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 with this bill on the thing. It's been going like, it's been moving very fast, obviously, too, on, the, on it. So once again, I apologize for not getting here soon. Um, the, the, the main concern I have at this point is the action of the web on it. And this is as a water system operator on it. Lowering an, a first drawer action le level, anything lower than what the, what, the, what the federal standard is, is going to cause major confusion with the general public, uh, with, with water system operators such as myself and any other, and, and any other sort of thing. Something that, that, that doesn't seem to be, be uh, addressed here you know, in anything that I've seen so far anything, is the fact that you have two actually different tests that, that's going on here. A first drawer leg sample and a flush sample. They're two different ones. Um, uh, our first drawer sample is just, as you've heard before already, on the it's, it's generally speaking, it's the worst case scenario we're looking at, at how the water system is operating and, co and the corrosion aspect of the thing uh, on it, how, how corrosive the water actually is in relation to, to the lead contents in, in, in specific uh, places. I've been doing lead sampling for the, for, for the, for the town, I think it started in 1993. I can't remember exactly what the date is on the thing I've been doing. Uh, obviously, I have the, I have 40 systems. I have 40 houses that I have to have in one system, in the Hartford system, the Creechie system. I have 20. We've met. We've made the limit all, all the way through. So we're doing monitoring. So it's 20. And, so and basically, the bottom line is the thing. The EPA standard thing is fi at 15. Understandably, it's an action level uh, limit uh, on it. Uh, on it to see what's going on with it. Because again, as Brian said, we do not, we cannot control the interior plumbing of, of houses. Yet we are responsible for the, for, for, the, for the quality of the water to the last half. I think that's in the safe drink water. Uh, so on it. Uh, what I would propose, since it seems to be that that most people are looking to set a lower standard, leave the 15 parts per billion alone. Leave leave, leave off to, for the first draw. Leave it alone. Lower the standard for, for a flush thing. On, first of all, everything that you've seen so far, in reality, on the kind of thing, you flush the line out. Number one, the first thing that you want to do anyway on it, and we've been advocating this all along for, for, for years, is flush the line until so you have cold water. Uh, don't use the hot water for, 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 for cooking. These are just things that we, that, that we do on, on, uh, on a, on a we try to do, you know, you know, in between, you know, what, you know basically water purveyors are we're too busy trying to put up spot fires and in, in water systems as opposed to, you know, our public relations uh, situations on the thing. So, uh, nonetheless, this would actually address the two issues on the thing, and, and it might actually help get the word out to customers. You remember is that, you know, students only drink the water half a year. First of all, 180 days out of the year, apparently, plus they're only here eight hours a day, or I mean, in school, eight hours a day. They're drinking water at their homes, the other eight, or someplace else, on the other by the eight or ten, or whatever the case on the thing. So in reality, I mean, I mean, when we're talking about the amount that we that we're even looking at on it, and quite frankly, I'm I'm, I'm glad you you brought it up because this is not a crisis. It's great that it was that it's bringing up. It's great that we're having a conversation on it, but it's not the sky is not falling on it. I mean, if you look at look at the results that we that we've actually been seeing, even on the pilot on a on a flush sample, it, you know, on it, we're getting down very low, even just just into a nothing on it. 
So I propose my request, as I said before, is to leave that 15 plus per million, leave that first drill alone. If you need to drop the standard on on, 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 on anything, drop it to the drop on the flush the, on, on, on flushed. Somewhere along the line, there needs to be some sort of comprehensive flushing program, daily flushing program. Because the whole key about everything regarding this thing is we talk about the first drill. Well, the first drill comes out in the vein is that I walk up to a water fountain, I don't know, and, I, and, and the water's been sitting there, and I'm going to get the first, first high lead. Somebody else walks up to it, they're going to get a whole lot less. The next person goes up, they're going to get a whole lot less. It's going to be as you use the water. That's the whole thing about, 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 about lead. It's one of the few contaminants out there that we can actually, it, it needs that contact time on it. So, so you don't really necessarily, we can fix 90% of the problems out there, maybe better than 90% of the problems that we out there right now, by just having a good flushing program inside, a daily flushing program, I think. Open the faucet until it's cold. I, mean, I know, I understand this, this might be very difficult to, to control, but there's something, that, but that's where, where it is, and I don't, I, didn't really dig real, real, real deep into the details of the bill, but I did not see what didn't see anything in there as far as, far as uh, on, on that. Uh, filters, personally, I think they, they should, we should, we should yeah, you know, should not in, not promote putting filters in on anything. Filters, if they are not uh, maintained, then more harm than good so, on, on it. So, and you you put a filter on a on a fixture. And you walk away and say, "This is great on it." On it, you don't know how long that filter is going to sit there and all of a sudden become a problem in itself on a thing until you see it, see it sampling again. Also, you need a sampling plan. You need a good, solid sampling plan per per place. This is I'm, I'm following. I'm virtually following what protocol that we had to go through back in 1992 or whenever it was on a thing when safety, when, 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 the, when the feds came out with, with, with the, uh, the, the, the sampling, the lead, lead sample uh, issue, uh, issue, guidelines on it. Develop the sampling plan, identify the crucial places on a thing. The first round, yes, we're gonna, you're gonna spend some money on the first round. You really don't have to spend a whole lot of money on the second, third, and fourth round. There's no reason to keep, to, to, to keep throwing lots of money on, on, on these things as long as we as we identify that a, that a flushing program and a flushing plan is being followed on it. And that's where it goes back to, again, it goes back to whoever's in that, that, that building, that school, whether, however it is. On it. Consolidation of drinking water fountains and fixtures that is, I'm, I'm all for that. Because the, the more you can actually push towards one fixture being used, the less lead's gonna be there. So, you know, you're gonna take away your convenience, but so be it, that's, that, that, that's key on it. On, on it. And uh, again, placarding, putting, putting signs up a thing, you know, just run the water for, for 30 seconds until you, be, and, you know, prior to drinking or something of that nature on it, on it things of that nature. I mean that's can, that that should be, you know, that, that's would would help also. But I'm not sure whether after a while people just forget about you know you leave a sign for so long and people just don't even bother reading it anymore. Then we think so. Um, that's uh, I don't I, again I don't want to take up a lot of your time on anything. But those are those are my, my key things. The other thing too is of course putting my taxpayer hat on the cost on it on, on it. As you said before, we're going to generate. It's going to cost money uh, initially, but the the what we are, the numbers that one well, that I've looked at right now is strictly for public schools. I take care of, as I said before, I'm the operator. I'm the contract operator for, for the child care center in Norwich. They are a 501c3, you know, nonprofit, but the private. They're going to have to eat this, you know, what, what, whatever comes through on the thing. I already have it in place as far as things are concerned because they, of course, it's a, it's a child care center. I've already, you know, they, they follow, so, so to speak, my procedures already, already anyway, meaning that they're, they're running water. And as soon as you start running water, as I said before, on it, uh, it's by most of the issues are, 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 are gone on it. 
I will, by the way, be, be doing further sampling on, on it, though, which I have not. I, I, I do have to do, because they're, they're, they're an NTNC, so they're not transient public work, public work system. That's why I'm there. Uh, they, uh, so we, we're required to do uh, lead sampling uh, every three years, I believe it is. I have to take five samples there, but they're first draw only. And my first draw samples have, have, been, have been final, so on, on that end of it. Um, so that's. Make sure that there's no time for questions here. So. so oh, okay. Yeah, that, yeah. Well, that's pretty much all it is. But go ahead. I'm sorry. Questions. I just want to have two questions. One is, if a child comes and drinks out of a fountain, mm -hmm. let's say it was flush, and then some child doesn't come for another 45 minutes, does that does the water increase again? How long does it take for the water to get back to 15 after flood? My, I don't know that question. I think it's going to be specific with things. And this is where we go back to, again, a, flushing, a, 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 a sampling procedure, sampling plan, plan mm -hmm. and such a thing, because I'm not really convinced about a, 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 a <laughs> this is pretty personal now. I haven't spoken to anybody on this. And, and even though I'm working from the town of Hartford, I haven't, I've had some unofficial discussions with them, yeah. you know, on it, on, on it. So I'm actually here on my own behalf on, on it, uh, on, on things on it. Uh, and if that includes the Green Mountain Water Environment Association, I, I we didn't, we have any time to discuss this, but I'm sure that I can speak for them. Actually, um, they, I, I think you'd have to do some testing that way, not to get crazy with testing, because testing is, and once again, this, all the test is a snapshot. Of, what, of, of what's happening, but you, you got to take your best shot on the thing. Perhaps it's it's best to take a sample, uh, take a run the water, you know, whatever case on the thing, and go back an hour or two later. This is this is a set, set your baseline. You got to set a baseline. You can't just take take samples all over the place sporadically, all over the place, because you have nothing to to, to go to go back on if you plan on doing doing anything. So you set your baseline. So so take it. You know, go back, go back in two hours and see, and, and, and see, see what the limit is on the thing, mm -hmm. on it. But it, it's going to be a case by case on the thing, and I think you're going to have to be more specific. You know, they're going to have to get. Um, it's you know, the, the, again, the, it's in the details. It's, that's where, where we're at on, the, on it. But you know, my my biggest thing here, the main my main reason I said before here is that is that 15 parts per million is just going to confuse. What are we going to tell my customers? If, if they, their kids are going to school and they have hearing all this other stuff on the thing and the, and the limit for, for, for the school has been dropped down to three parts per billion or whatever number that you guys decide on on the thing, and yet the public water supplier who, who, who gives, who's there, which, that's where they're drinking the water from the other thousand, is at 15 parts per billion. It throws, it's just crazy stuff on the thing. I can, I, I can definitely, you know, it just, you know, uh, uh, explain to them that the first drawer and the flushed. But when you when you when this bill puts everything together, it's gonna drive us crazy. And it's gonna drive everybody else crazy here too, I think, because I can't see and, and who knows what's gonna happen coming down from EPA if if, if, if they ever get get through with the lips, you know, on a thing. Maybe they'll maybe they're gonna come down and drop it to five or something like that. I mean some of these numbers again I'm going back to I'm looking at stuff the, the White River Elementary School was part of the pilot plan. They're part of my system, the town of system on it. Um, most of those, those were below the, their first drawer was they had everything less than one and they had one at one on it, which is fantastic on that thing. Their their flush I mean I mean I'm sorry, their, their, their flush. Their first drawer, they had a couple at, at three parts per billion uh, on it. So in this rule, if you go and say three parts per billion is the action level, they, their flush is showing great, but their action level is at three, which means they're gonna have to do something. It, it's nuts, it's crazy on the so you, Claire, you're recommending that that the, the first draw be at fifteen and then we can lower to a, another standard. That would be my suggestion. <coughs> Would your recommendation be at that? I'm going to leave that up to you folks. I feel five, five, three, if they're. Three, one. I, I, no. If I would, I, that's up to you guys. I, I'm not going to get into that part of, this, part of it because I think that, that I, I'm going to, you know, I agree with the concept of the bill. I understand the thing on the thing. No, you know, lead is, lead is not good and, you know, on it. Nobody wants it. You want one? Should we drink it? I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, yeah, first of all, thank you very much for uh, making your time to come up here and speaking about some kind of an on the ground view of the way it works. Uh, did I hear you say that when you test the child care center, 
it's a first draw only test. That's the requirement. Okay. And why then should it be different for? Uh, or what's the what's the action level on the first draw test for a child? Fifteen. Care? Uh, 15 the okay. Same thing. Right. So it, it's it's exactly. It's I got to follow the standards that that the state sets, which nope. is actually the actually the EPA level. I will be in my next round. I'm going to be grabbing a couple of a couple of. Uh, well, depending on what happens out of the same way, I'm going to want to do it anyway, but um, I'm going to be curious. Representative Elder? Yeah, thanks for being here. Um, do you know, is that the gear, if you're involved in some statewide, uh, I forgot the name of the organization. Green Mountain Water Environment Association. Yeah. And so through that, do you, do you know, is there any kind of data that you have about the environmental impact of the And so through that, do you know... How many lead service lines? Not exactly, but is this something that's really going on in Vermont? Uh, my guess is, I can only speak for my water systems on it, and quite frankly, my Hartford, my my, my system in Hartford, that uh, in that takes in, well, I call it the Hartford system, takes in White River Junction, Wild and Hartford Village, uh, of, on it. Uh, I don't sh I don't know of any because we we will be proactive in taking it out, but I'm going to pretty much venture to say that there's some out there because yeah. some of my system was put in back in 1907, mm -hmm. 1910, and it's still in there. <coughs> now, that before I before I showed up in 88 in, you know, in, in, in Vermont, for that matter, in Hartford, uh, they went, they were pretty aggressive, they went out and did quite a few uh, removing lead service lines, mm -hmm. lead goose, we didn't have any lead service lines per se, and they did lead goose eggs, they're galvanized lines. They didn't do it to remove the lead. They did because the galvanized iron was was was, was, was you know popping holes and you know, things. So they so they were doing that. And of course, in the, in the interim, they got rid of they got rid of it. That was good for me because they went through a whole lot of them as far as what just went through the thing. Every once in a while, though, last year we, we, we go down. We, we have a water, water leak on a on a line. We dig down. We find a lead goose egg on the thing. We we actually at that that particular house. As a matter of fact, I could, we couldn't change it at that particular time, but we. I took three samples at that particular house, one first draw, one flushed, and one they took out of their refrigerator, That's because that's where the woman was taking the water from, I think. And I can't remember, I didn't pull the numbers on the thing, but they all came back fine. I mean, you know, incredibly fine. And this was a, you know, this was a, you know, it was, again, it was in there since 19, you know, when, you know, when, uh, it's been since we, we've been placed the entire line, I think. So we, so we are proactive in that. But I don't, I don't know if anybody, short of, you know, yeah, you can look at, you can pull up records if they have records, and if, and if they're showing that that the town that the the, the water system's side is galvanized, mm -hmm. there's a very strong chance that you're going to have have a lead goose neck uh, on okay. because that's the way that's the only way you can connect the pipes. You got a big pipe here, and you got you got another another pipe coming in here. So what you do is you, you make the tap, and you and you, you take this lead nice lead goose neck go around and tie it right into the That's why they actually made these things back in there. Before I got involved in this, in this business, somewhere. Okay, then one more question. So, if you were in um, in a school, if the first draw is a little higher and um, the flush draw is lower, and the reason the first draw is higher is because it's been in contact. You were saying that it's a thing about lead. It's kind of because it's going to be in contact. And for the most part, what's the water been in contact with that's causing that first draw to be higher? Oh, I'm going, to, I'm going to guess it's going to be the fixture uh, on it. That's where it usually is. That's where you, where you, where you have it. I mean, you, when you think about a liter, I didn't do the math on the thing, but it takes, yeah, I should have done the math on it for a half inch pipe and a quarter inch pipe. I know how big, how many, how many gallons. You know, they're, they're six gallons and a 12 inch pipe, but I can't remember what it is in small ones. Anyway, um, yeah, per foot, talking about. Uh, there, so how much you're catching, you're capturing, and I think like predominantly you're, cap you're capturing what's in, what's in that fixture itself on the thing. Now, as it's going through the thing, too, is that when you have your hot and cold together on the thing, and there it happens to be you ran hot at, at sometimes, hot water, you're going to have more lead, possibility of more lead in coming out of, out of hot water because of the tank, because of the contact time, because of the temperature, because of things of that nature. Not necessarily contact, uh, uh, lead, lead in, in, a, in a hot water heat. I don't know. I'm not aware of that. Usually they're glass lines. At least in most of them. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. But more just because of temperature, because of time. Uh, yeah, and, 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 and time and things of that nature. I don't think you're going to see that. So, and I've never... 
I'm only going by what I've heard. I, I've never, uh, I've, I've never taken a sample from a from a hot water side and say, oh yeah. So I have nothing to go by except for what I've, what, what they, what, it, what we've been, what we've been promoting or, or advocating on the thing on it. So, but once again, I mean, if you, if, if, if the limit on it, on a flush is, is, is lower, it, it's set for. If you set the limit for, for flushed only, and we could actually, as a public as public water systems, almost help promote that or if that possible anyway. It's only because of that, or well, it'll promote itself then. Because now you're getting it where if the kid, if the stuff is going 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 home to home 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 with the students. <coughs> And they were showing flush on the thing. Now they're going to more. They're going to do it more. They might not, you know, you know, you know, pay attention to us as much. Or again, we don't. We're not out there every single day with, with, with the public relations. We just don't, we don't have the time. You know, many years ago we were we, we were really taken for granted. I mean, we, nobody even thought thought that you know water. That was just you know what the case in the thing back when they. We got open reservoirs and everything else and thing, and now all of a sudden you know, we're getting to the where we I get phone calls, you know, on it, and I'm sure they Brian gets phone calls too on, on on all different types of things on it. So once again, this is actually just not one more that we need you need on it. And what I way what, what I would suggest if you do say the say is not actually put a number in there, 15, put in as EPA standard. If EPA decides to drop it. I guess it drops. I guess then we'll go back and whatever case if the EPA leaves, leaves, leaves it, you know, whenever they whenever they decide on, on that, that's just, that's only if you if you folks. Some of us are a little concerned about the federal government right now. Well, yeah, yeah, but you know, I, I, I also am aware of the time. Um, there's an opportunity for okay. people to talk to you uh, outside of the room as well. I'm here all day. Here. I'm here as long as you need. Go off, off record you. and let people have lunch, and I know we're going to get lunch. Um, and we will be looking at ongoing these two issues. One is the student records, and the other is, is this one. We have our attorney coming in um, at 2. Michael O'Grady will come in. I had originally written up a chat. I had originally taken the 8th bill and turned it into the school bill, and that will be done on F40. Um, it, it appears that we may not be able to uh, sort that up by the end of today, so we'll probably keep the board together unless we can move forward on, on that. But, um, I'm so, take a break. Thank you once again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.